No, but to try and answer your question, I mean, you know, look, there is no easy answer to the question you have. You need to analyze what your product is. You yeah. know, what, and you need to come up at a time like this is a primary opportunity, actually, uh, for you. Because, I mean, uh, I must tell you firstly that I'm not a digital, I'm not uh, a digital champion. Okay. I, uh, I technology, like I said, I think I said to you, I'd certainly said to Samir in the beginning that I am slightly technologically challenged. So I don't know if my answers could be as accurate as you'd like them to be. But I must tell you that today, the one area that is less hindered or not hindered at all is the digital space. Look at us today, right? We are all living in our homes. We've been locked down for the longest time and will be locked down for the longest time going forward. But we are having this great conversation, this great webinar digital yeah. so yeah. you need to figure out what you're good at what your company is good at what is your offering and i don't want to get into the micro details but what yeah. is your offering what are you actually helping to do don't give don't give yourself generalities oh i'm an experiential marketing company what can i do i mean that is regular that there are hundreds of companies offering that yeah. you have to stand in line okay i'm sorry i'm being really straight no, no. That's if you want to make a difference there's no easy answers. If you want to make a difference, you've got to sit yourself down with your partners, your team or whoever, or sit yourself down and figure out, this is who I am. I'm Dev Kiran. I have a certain offering that I have created. Now, how can I use this offering? You're saying to earn money to create sustainability. Don't look at it like that. How can I use my talent? How can I use my mind? How can I use the, uh, the digital assets that I have to actually create an advantage or ease the pain or create advantageous situations for certain brands. You'll need to identify an industry, let's say. You'll need to identify, choose a fast move, FMCG industry or whichever other industries are facing trouble and see using your technology, using your brains, using your effectiveness, how can you raise the bar? Not an easy question to answer, I must admit, but these are not easy times either. I'll tell you I'll, give you, I'll give you what we're doing in our company. We're experiential. We've come to a grinding halt. So true. When I say grinding halt, I mean grinding halt. <laughs> okay. What do we do? What do we do? You know what? We are sitting. I, 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 I was a little late coming on board because we were part of a meeting where I'm just giving you an example. We've divided our events team into four large groups. Okay. And, and there are a large, lot of people in our company and we've given them eight briefs. They're not fictional briefs, they're real briefs based on real clients that we have. And we've given them very highly defined objectives. So, so let's say there's a problem in, uh, I don't know, in the cement industry. We have said, how would you use technology? How would you use who we are? How would you go to these companies and actually create a system where they can achieve what they want? Now, recently what we did was we created a global marketing seminar for a global brand. Okay. We ran it out of Stockholm and we had 45 to 50 people spend two days in a global seminar, which was virtual. When they were still exchanging notes, we were still, they were still exchanging ideas. They were still exchanging thoughts. There were still speakers. So, I mean, that's a small example. It's a cliched example. I'm sure there are very many people doing that. I'm just giving you an example of how our business is about bringing people together as the immediate thing, but the finite purpose of bringing people together is to exchange ideas, to exchange knowledge, to, 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 to discuss stuff. How can we achieve that without them physically meeting is what we spend time on and we didn't. And now we've given eight briefs and they're not, I'm repeating fictional briefs. They're real briefs, real brands. And we are saying, let's create when and all things will pass, this will pass as well. And when things pass, if we are still alive and well, we will have eight brilliant, hopefully, ready. brilliant new thoughts ready. Yeah. We're looking at expenses. I'm just giving you examples. We're looking at all expenses and we're seeing how best can we minimize. This could change pandemic, could change the way we live our lives, could change the way we do business. One question everyone's asking is, do we need to pay rents and have an office? <laughs> I am. These are hard questions being asked. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? We are so, facing this. So, so are there ways we can, we can make our business more cost effective going forward? Can we have a smaller office if we are 300 odd people in Fountainhead? Okay. So do we need 300 people to be sitting in the same place? Can we have a smaller office where we pay one fifth rent for hundred people? 
or whatever, however many people, and can people use, you know, the 50 of the 100 desks, let's say 100 desks, 50 desks are used for people, and 50 are rotational desks. We may, we may choose not to. Uh, they, they can, we may choose not to, but I'm saying you need to explore these possibilities given your product. How yeah. much can you make a difference to the world out there? And of course, I'm saying do it for money. Of course, I'm not, I, you know, I mean, everything comes at a cost. Yeah. Everything comes at a price. So don't compromise your value, but you must be taking value. You can't be just going to a brand and making small talk, you know. It's-